Okay, is it rolling? Hey guys, this isn't exactly the normal kind of episode I have here. Um, a lot of you guys ask, do I shoot guns besides air guns? Um, yeah, I do. I got center fires, rim fires, shotguns. I shoot all of them. And I also shoot these. Albeit I'm not quite as good a shot with these as I am with the air guns, but I get by. So, here in beautiful Cozumel, my friend Leo, my new friend Rodrigo, El Capitan Danielle, and we are going to go see if we can get some fish out of this water. Uh, here's the best part. You're coming with me. <laughs> here you go. Okay, first off, as most of you know, I am from Wisconsin. Cozumel is located way down here, right off the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. And contrary to most American songs about Mexico, there are actually rules in Mexico. In Cozumel, you can spearfish, but you cannot use scuba tanks to do it. You also need to always use a boat in Cozumel because the currents are very strong. About one to four knots usually, sometimes they back off a little bit near shore. But by and large, if you are going to dive from the shore, you'd better know what you're doing or the next stop for you is going to be Cuba. In addition, over half the island is surrounded by Marine Park and if you get caught spearfishing in here, you will wish you were on your way to Cuba. You need to have a spearfishing license on this island, and it's best to just go through a guide like Leo at spearfishingtoday.com. In fact, I think he's the only spearfishing outfit on the whole island, so if you want to spear on God's mill, you better go find Leo. And spearfishing can be dangerous. We are diving deep, up to 80 feet sometimes, and that means that you have the risk of blacking out. You've always got to stay close to your buddy, and you always have one up, one down. You can see here, as Leo comes to the surface, I give him a look, and he tells me he's okay before I take off and start thinking about my dive. In the ocean, you got to have a buddy with a brain, and you got to have each other's back. And spearing fish is like hunting big game. You will spend hours in the water for every big fish you pull out. I wish I could say that you could spot them from the surface and head down, but the current in Cozumel is so stiff that if you wait until you see a fish, the current will sweep you over him before you even have a chance at a shot. You have got to spend as much time on the bottom as you possibly can. But the good news is that even if you don't find your trophy out there, you can usually find something to eat. And these little trigger fish are absolutely delicious. The meat is very dense. It's almost like the density of chicken, but the consistency and flakiness of fish. It's strange. It's like one and a half times the density of normal fish. And there's always usually a few of these, either on the reef or out on the sand flats that you can put in the boat. And a lot of times this fish gives you a side angle when they turn to take a look at you and that's when you take your shot. That big old gray profile, you can hardly miss it. and you have to check on every single little hole you possibly can find. Grouper and snapper, these are fish that like to hide out, hide in holes, especially the big boys. You're not going to see them just out swimming nonchalantly across the reef. It doesn't happen. Any big fish that does that doesn't last long. The big guys are old, they're smart, they're wary, and they're really spooky. You got to get down there, pop your head in the hole, and see if you can find them. It had been many dives with me seeing absolutely nothing. So when this big grouper popped out, naturally, I totally screwed up. When you're shooting at a moving fish, you have to lead them, like when you shoot at a flying bird with a shotgun. And in this shot, I absolutely didn't do that. And we can see the spear go right behind him. I was aiming at him, but that didn't do any good because he swam right away from the aim. And sometimes you don't get fish, but the good news is, you're in the ocean. There's all kinds of great stuff to see. You can look at sunken ships. Uh, check out swimming sea turtles. 
Here's a nice family of eagle rays going up current. And even better, sometimes when you're sightseeing, you turn your head, and there's a big school of food sitting right on the edge of the drop-off. Swim on down, take a look at these jacks. I line up my shot. And here we see the power of the school of fish. I have difficulty focusing on one fish and miss that guy because the other ones are distracting me. They're not dumb either. They're not going to stick around and let me have another shot at them. They're out of here. You dive and you dive and you dive some more. And sometimes you even get a little bit punchy. <laughs> I'm not going to defend this. I'm just going to say it was a long day. <laughs> but eventually, patience pays off. And on this dive, when I went down, I did not see this fish. See him? He's right here. And when you see a big fish like this, you have got to play it cool. you got to make that fish think that you're down there for some other reason than him. So in this case, I kind of look off to the side a little bit. And I don't put it in his spine or his head, so he runs like a banshee with this spear in him. It was good enough shot that he couldn't tear off, but he went under this coral head, wedged my spear in between the coral and the sand, and just bent the crap out of my really nice spear. You know, I'm not going to complain, it's totally worth it. But still. Had I drilled him in the head or the spine and stoned him, as uh, spear fishermen say it, stoning is when you incapacitate a fish immediately with one shot. It's the ideal shot for a spear fisherman. Had I stoned him, I would not have had my spear get bent up. We did get him to the surface, and we did get him in the boat. And that's all that really counts. No, I didn't see him till I dove. And then what, you see me take an angle? How I, I'm like... I'm not interested in you. Exactly. I don't want anything to do with you. <laughs> and we just got up in the boat and we see the federales coming right at us. As soon as I realized it was them, I shut off the camera. Now we thought they were coming to inspect our fish and they wanted to make sure we had our permits. Turns out, seven tourists and two guides tried crossing from Cozumel over to the mainland in a glass bottom boat. These boats are absolutely not made for open ocean and, consequently, the open ocean kicked the crap out of this boat and sank it about halfway across. And they certainly would have died had it not been for the rescue mission. They sent out helicopters, planes, uh, every ship in the area was out looking for these guys. It turned out, the hero of this day was the Russian super yacht named Ice. I filmed this thing as I came flying into Cozumelic, but here's a better picture of it. In short, the captain and crew of this vessel, Ice, saved these people's lives. It is a sobering day for anyone on the water when you know someone else is missing, and we were very happy to hear the good news later that night that they had found all nine people alive. About a half hour after sticking that big grouper, we were drifting toward the end of a major reef. And Rodrigo decided that, you know, being the end of the dive, he might as well stick a trigger fish and put some meat in the boat. And then we see a big old amberjack sitting right on the edge of the reef. But because my spear was all bent up, I had to use a different gun. And this different gun didn't have the same power as my gun. So while the shot hit hard, it didn't go all the way through the fish. Had Rodrigo not been wrestling with a trigger fish on his gun, he would have been able to swim down and stick this amberjack again. Do you think you need a second shot? Should I drop this yeah, drop him off and get a second shot for me. So I'll try to play him with drag, rather than try to yank him right to the surface. And I swam down to take a look at his condition, and I saw a gray figure about twice his size approach him. Next thing I know, my line goes completely running, the fish gets tore off, and we are left without our amberjack. What that fish was, I really don't know. But what I do know is that amberjack didn't last 15 more minutes in the water. 
He was mortally wounded, bleeding out. And I can tell you from experience, when I'm in the Bahamas and I'm cleaning a fish on the deck and I throw that carcass into the water, it sometimes takes less than 15 minutes for these bad boys to show up. When you're in the ocean, you may not see sharks, but they're always nearby. If there's a coral reef, if there's food, sharks are nearby. Under normal circumstances, there are huge cruise ships tied up at the main dock of Cozumel. When the cruise ships are there, you obviously can't go diving near these docks. For obvious reasons of the way of the world today, people might think that you're going to be up to no good. But when they're not there, we're allowed to go check it out. And on this day, we saw a fish of a lifetime. Rodrigo waves me over. He went down and he stuck it. He placed an excellent shot in the head of this grouper. You can't see it yet, but it was far underneath this debris and he had to go in after it to get it out. I was totally prepared to have to grab Rodrigo by the ankles and yank him out, but he managed to shimmy his way backwards and he got himself out and we got this big old grouper to the surface. I was so happy for Rodrigo. It was just a great, great day. Neither one of us are going to forget this day anytime soon. I'm on dock here now. Had a damn good day. Put some big fish in the boat. And uh, now local folks are going to clean them up for us. And the deal is we give them the head and they give us the fillets. I've eaten meat out of the fish head before and it's pretty damn good, but I don't know how to get everything out of the fish head that you can get out of it. They know how to how to cook it so they get every scrap out of it. So you've come up here with a big old fish, big grouper like we have today. They're quick to offer you their services to fillet it up. You walk home with the fillets, they take the head, everybody's happy. Then I take the fillets, go in town to the local restaurant, and then they cook my meal for free in return for you know more catch of the day so they can serve to their customers. Not a scrap, not one scrap of meat is wasted off of these fish. I'm serious. I'm looking down here at these guys cutting these up and I'll tell you what goes in the water. The intestines, the stomach, and the fins. That's it. Liver, heart, meat, head, everything. It's going in the pot. We in the States could uh, you know, take a lesson. I could take a lesson from them and uh, I am going to be paying attention closely. Uh, anyway, it's a great trip. It's good to be in Mexico again. And here is the best part. They cooked the fish up exactly how I like. Garlic and butter. Absolutely delicious. Um, you know, this is what it's all about. I'm gonna eat now. And that's the end of this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm walking back to my hotel room. Some leftovers that are gonna taste awesome at midnight. Rain is just starting to come down here. Oh, there goes a kitty. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate you coming along with me on my trip. I'll see you at the next video. <laughs> Here you go.